launched into like the project files for past, present, future, which was the kind of collab that I did with Dance Ensemble uh, about a couple of months ago um, for NAF 2021, uh, NUS Arts Festival. Uh, I will talk about, I will just use this simple demo piece to demonstrate uh, what I'm talking about of using a sort of non-musical start point, a very simple start point, um, and then making something out of it. So uh, for this piece, right, uh, actually, yeah, I actually, I went into it not like completely in a vacuum because like often we, we don't start in a vacuum. Like you, you usually, usually when you see a blank page, it's really hard to start. You need something to like spur you or something. Um, often the most, the one we are most familiar about is like listening to a song that, oh, I like the way that sounds. Maybe I'll make something similar to it or inspired by it. But um, sometimes you can be inspired by things that are not musical in nature. So um, for this piece, I decided to just almost, because it's also a demo, lah, so I just arbitrarily picked a kind of mental image of a forest, of like going through a forest with a sort of river. I'll, I have a demo video, this is the starting point, then I, I mean for the purposes of this lesson, I also found something online that matched it. This is from Pexels, which is a free Creative Commons Zero uh, website, so you can use any of the footage there, you don't even have to attribute to the original author. Like legally, you're allowed to do that. So I'm just, yeah, I just use this as a starting point. So this is a completely silent video. So there's no sound. It's just footage like that. Okay. So now that we have stared at that awkwardly for 30 seconds. Um, yeah. So that's the, that's kind of the starting point I had for myself when writing the piece. And as you can see, this starting point is completely silent. It has nothing to do with sound, nothing to do with music. All you have is visual input. So the input you are given is just visual. So why do I think it's important to share this? Um, maybe I'll just share first. Like why, why do I think it's important to like be able to build a skill of being able to translate non-sonic non kind of sources of inspiration into kind of uh, more musical uh, output? Uh, well, because in many of the collabs that we do with other groups, right? Like I mentioned before, they are, they are most often not uh, musical groups. Uh, EML has a, the, in EML's history, we usually collab with dance groups, if you, I mean, of course, we collab with music groups as well, but in recent years, most of the collabs are dance-based or uh, kind of performance-based. Uh, like I think there's, it's collab, we have collab with stage, we have collab with dance ensemble, dance synergy. So it's more like action-oriented. It's not so much to do with music making or playing of instruments. So that's usually the kind of working relationship we have in our collabs. It's working with people who are not necessarily musicians. So. In that case, when a collab starts, when we are kind of usually EML like makes is called into like make music for these groups, right? Usually we are given a piece of uh, a brief or maybe a like a sort of brief concept art or concept photos, demo photos, demo reels, and all that to kind of spur us into making the thing that they want us to make or the thing that we are collaborating on. So you sh they won't. They sometimes might give you a piece of music that oh maybe I want it to sound like Hans Zimmer, but at the same time they will want you to put your own sonic signature on it if, because I mean, ultimately it's a collaboration. So sometimes they will give you like, let's say, let's say for Dance Ensemble, what they gave me was just a set of like very simple, um, very simple story outline, story beats, and maybe some very vague, um, very vague like dance choreo videos that uh, were on YouTube. So it's not really to do with music, like the stimuli, the stimulus we're giving is uh no uh, i would say big yeah yeah sorry uh yeah yeah big pieces of stuff because um i mean all these productions like they take time to formulate so often when you collaborate with people right like like ideal in an ideal world when you want to score something um the the video is already done perfectly or the, the movie is already shot everyone all the speaking lines all the dialogue is in then you just compose the music to that but often in like our cfa collapse we are all kind of working in parallel so um they might be choreographing the piece of dance, uh, they might be choreographing the dance piece while you are composing at the same time. So it's kind of a uh, kind of parallel back to back rather than they complete it, then you score it. Cause uh, it's just the kind of working relationship that tends to emerge from our collapse with other CFA groups. So I think it's important to be able to take all these stimuli and then like um, translate them. Uh, even if it doesn't, even if it's not a perfect kind of like one-to-one -one matching to a picture, like it's important to be able to like trans mentally translate all of these things um, to music. Okay, okay. So like 
can anyone like just out of the out of the blue like throw me some adjectives how did that footage make you feel it's going to sound like a therapy session but like how did that footage make you feel throw me adjectives or like any nouns or words and all that y'all can type it in the chat or i'll much prefer if y'all say it and say it out loud relax okay more um green green okay green tranquil okay Curious, okay. Chill, okay. Yeah, just any word that comes to your mind. Yeah, adventure. Ooh, airy, nice. Nerd, oi, oi, Sean, Sean, nice reference. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, yeah, so thanks for all that. Okay, so this is the thing, like even without like auditory stimuli, you're already to like sort of create some mental associations in your head. So now that we have all this collection of like nice words to play with, right? Like it is now important to like kind of get the general feel of it. I think the general consensus is that it is a pretty relaxing, chilled out image. Like you can see the way the camera pans is very slow, very graceful, and all that. There's a sense of wondering, like Clint pointed out. You're you're not really sure where you are. There's a sense of being lost. So how do we translate that into music? How do we translate that into the musical choices that we make? Okay. So um, the way I did this, like um because it is kind of mysterious, but yet more tranquil, right? Um, the, the instrument I essentially picked at the start is like not something that's bombastic. It's not something that's very loud and like um, very blaring and all that. It, of course, it's something that matches the tone. Ah. It's very chill and all that. Um, not that you can't use blaring instruments to fit this picture. I'm sure there's a way to do it, but just in the, I mean, the general vibe that we get from it, from this like uh, moving image is that um, it is very tranquil and chill. So that's what we went with. So like, can anyone name the most like stereotypically tranquil and chill instrument out there? Yeah. Piano. Yes, piano, correct. Okay, so yeah. Oh, flute, also can I actually flute. <laughs> nice, although flute. Up, up, up. Oh yeah, harp, nice, yeah. So just, yeah, anyone with other ideas for instruments? I mean, yeah, granted in this demo, as you all have heard a bit, I, I use piano, but um, I mean, there's uh, alternate possibilities as well. So yeah, flute gang, right? Yeah, I mean, there's this, there's a big room house track which uses a flute or so, that one is quite tranquil also. <laughs> but yeah, ah, uh, yeah, nice. So yes, so um, this is how you kind of define your starting points. It's actually, I mean, like what I'm saying is actually very obvious and all that because, but at the same time, sometimes it's like good to like kind of break down the process into the tiny bits. Like how do we actually make this decision from like the moving image and all that. Long attack and release. Uh, Clint, it's interesting to say that because if you think about it, piano actually has a short attack. Piano is actually a very, it's like a very percussive sound. So it's more of the timbre itself. It's not say about the attack and release in terms of synthesizer terms, like you can actually use long attack and all that. Of course, flow, like if, if you can picture some flowing strings to this image, it also works out. But um, I mean, just in the way that I have done it, I use piano. So yeah, but thanks for bringing that up uh, because like, yeah, the, a way, another way to think about instrument selection is through like kind of the shape or, or the contour of the sound and all that. Although uh, it's not always 100% long attack and release. Okay, so yeah. I'm going to show you all the, I'm just going to play the first part of the piece now. So I'm going to solo the, um, solo the piano track. Okay. Because um, the way I did it is like, I just had this image in my head and all that. Then I just played a very soft line for um, about one minute plus. Then I just recorded everything to like the click track. Yeah, you'll get the idea of the kind of um, piano mode I'm doing. Like I actually played this live, but um, you could very much do this um, with like piano roll and all that. So I'm just going to stand up and like, play the track now. So, so if you all can take a look at my other screen, 
Like, uh, Ben, could you pin my piano screen? Oh, actually, I can pin. Yeah, okay, do you all see that my piano thing? So, um, it might look very complex, right? But, uh, as in, like, if you just, like, go into it, like, raw, it might seem like a very, uh, it might seem a bit complicated at first, but all I'm doing is just using two fingers, then, you hear that? I'm just using two notes. So actually you can, it's quite easy to like even click this in and program and all that. So, so da, 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 da. because I, I mean, of course this uh, with more practice with like instruments for those with like less musical experience, it might take a little longer to be able to come up with something like this. But I mean, uh, I just want to show that it's actually quite bare bones, like the way the way that I started out this idea. It's really just two notes. And then I have the lower chords, which is just this A here. So it's just... Then this is the first change. This is the first change that I have. So instead of... Okay, so um, I mean, yeah, it's actually, I'm not really doing that all that much. It's just repeated patterns and uh, the bass is just pressing, pressing in fifths. Lah. So these are just the kind of ideas I get. Like uh, the reason I picked this kind of scale, if you will, or this mode, it's because I felt it's, it like kind of fits this vibe because it's not overly, it's not overly happy or or like like it's not like a like enchanted it's not like a like the happy disney enchanted forest it's more like a pensive mysterious it's not necessarily sad but also you are going but also it's like there's this sense that you don't exactly know where you are you're wondering so Also, do you all notice that it basically just goes in almost a circular motion? Da, 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 da. Then it goes to the second step. Then it goes back again. Almost, almost as though like there isn't really that much of a direction to the track. You don't really know where it's going to go. So yeah, I um. So is is everyone following at this point? Like, do you all need me to clarify anything? Because uh, I mean, uh, yeah, then right. Okay, so um. Just a brief aside, uh, yeah, I'm using a live piano and all that. And I also say it's, it's also okay to use piano roll, but I would say that in terms of compose, composing for this kind, right, it is useful to at least pick up a little bit of like keyboard skills because um, it allows you to play in a little bit more expressively. Because if it's piano roll, it's kind of very uh, quantized and kind of mechanical. So actually, if you open the piano roll here, right, oh dear. Yeah, I didn't actually quantize anything. So it's all like kind of freehand up. Yeah, you can tell it's a little bit off at certain points and all that. So I just played, I just played it like that. So there's a little bit of the human mistakes because I no one is able to play perfectly in time, but that's kind of what makes it more of a performance. Like, and especially in film, right? Especially since like, uh, especially for stuff where you're not necessarily making like overtly electronic, um, music, um, it's useful to have just a little bit of that human imperfection. So I would uh, highly recommend that you all like, uh, if you all don't already it, uh, do it, like try to learn keyboards to some degree. It doesn't need to be anything complicated. It doesn't need to be like ABRSM level learning pieces, but try to like just get a feel for how to move around, move your fingers around. So like you can just do simple actions like it's just two, two notes and all that, but because every time you press the note, you are, your fingers are pressing it with just varying levels of strength. This creates variations in the performance as well. And therefore it becomes uh, a lot more, uh, a lot more um, expressive in that sense. So yeah, that's just a brief aside. Um, in terms of like where, how to, where to get keyboards uh, and all that, uh, EML has some that uh, once we can reopen the studio, uh, y'all can just use those. Um, and on Carousel, there's a lot of used ones that are going for pretty cheap, like under 100 and all that. And if you want new ones, uh, even the brand new ones, they are not very expensive anymore, especially the Novation ones. They are like kind of full-size keys, but um, very nice to play also. And 
under under 300 that kind of thing like so it's up to you there's there's many it's quite accessible now so yeah so it's good to pick up some level of keyboard skills especially when it comes to composition because it's also very fast like it has you you come up with the idea in your brain and then you can immediately start to noodle on keyboard rather than but sometimes when you're clicking in the notes in piano row you might lose your idea before you get it down so it's quite useful to just pick up some very basic keyboard skills. It doesn't need to be anything like elaborate or anything. Okay. All right. So um, that's it. So we have the piano layer, right? I basically just played variations of this da, 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 for about one minute. If you if I skip over to like the later parts of the track, right? I actually I didn't vary it a lot. It's basically the only things that are changing is just the notes, but the motion of the notes, the da 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 da, da is pretty much the same throughout. So honestly, a lot of like uh, media composition or composing for like a picture or like any sort of brief is usually like that. Like you usually don't have a certain like you don't have to like overtly make big changes because you actually want it to be more seamless and all that. There are exceptions, of course, if you're making more exciting music, like bombastic, then of course you can have big changes and all that. But in this case, I mean, we are just trying to set them. Yeah, so yeah, Christy, I just varied the left hand chords, then the right hand, I just shift like one semi, one semitone. Yeah, music to complement other media. That's, that's a good point, Clint. That's why. It's, yeah, this is this whole field of like composing music digitally to, uh, to like picture or whatever thing is up. It's called media composition. You can uh, research on it because it's kind of pretty new, uh, in the sense that it involves just it involves like almost like electronic music producer skills, but making music for uh, TV directly. And like you are both a producer and a composer, and you try to just compose it directly using software. Like it's usually for like small to mid range productions and all that. But it's quite an interesting field to like get into. Okay. Yeah, so Christy, I just answer again. I did, yeah, I just varied the left hand, go up, down, up, down. Yeah, that's basically it. That's all I did. So it's very, very basic. But of course, um, there's actually like if you think about it, you could just have this and then just call it a day. Like because like I mean, it's a tranquil scene, right? Piano, very tranquil. But of course, you want some progression in it. You want some a little bit more spice and flavor to it. So um, for this first part, as you can tell, it's very sparse. Uh, especially with just the piano. So I decided to add a little bit more um, spice with uh, some low strings. Okay, I'm going to just... Um, okay, so I'm going to play this. Then you all just listen out for the low strings. It's very simple. The low strings is even simpler than the piano. So. I'm just going to solo the piano so you can hear the strings better. Oh, sorry. So do you hear that? Do you hear that? It's very, very soft, right? Okay, so uh, that's actually the idea because I know in electronic music production is always like a uh, very tempting to use the biggest loudest synth the biggest fattest super saw the biggest wobble wobbliest bass and all that but um especially when you're making for like yeah <laughs> like for uh for like um something else like some other form of media it's not necessary it's not always like optimal to make something that's just loud all the way so it's very good to keep things minimal um like as we as you have seen with the piano part that i did the strings is even more minimal. Like you see, it's just one note. It's just playing the it's just playing the the bit, the root note of every of every chord that I'm playing. So A, then F, then A, then F. It's just it's following the piano. It's not doing anything exciting. Okay? But if you heard when both the piano and the strings are playing at the same time, you could hear at the bottom there's a little bit of that string rumble. <sighs> all coming out a little bit. So just now when it was just piano, yes, it's very airy, it's very light, it's very kind of like twinkly. La. But at the same time now, when you add this slight, very subtle, like almost growling kind of, growling, but not in a dubstep way, like in a very subtle, 
rumbling kind of way. Uh, this kind of string instrument, you add a little bit of a dark edge to the to the um, to the scene. Because just now we were talking about like how to describe the scene, right? It is very mysterious. It is very um, it is very it's very tranquil, but at the same time, there's an element of mystery. You don't know where you are, so you kind of want to convey that with something that's soft. It's kind of just creeping there. It is not in your face. It's just creeping in the background. Like that. Okay. So yes, very simple notes. Okay. So now like you would want some progression, of course, um, because if you just keep it as a loop like that, it will get boring. Uh, so um, in terms of like just progressing it to the next part, right? Um, you have to just, you have to tow this line of like, making changes that are kind that kind of make sense and that fit with the previous section so um well, i'll just shrink all the sections huh, first so i can see everything so uh this is actually the entire project file it's just it's honestly just six layers and the way i did it is just every 16 bars i add two more layers so this is just the way i did it lah. um and just to is this kind of progressive building and all that is like a good way to like create this movement, uh, like a progression in the story. So it's not just the same kind of line. Because if you just look at the piano line in isolation, it's doing the same thing throughout. So um, the way you create progression is to add other lines. So let's just skip to this part. Oh, sorry. Okay, so in terms of volume, you can tell that there is a little bit of a lift now, but it's still kind of like sonically coherent with the earlier section. In fact, we should pay attention to like the switch from this first section to the second, this first section here to the second section here where the guitar and this other tape thing comes in. So I'll just show you, just listen to the change, listen out for the shift. The way I did it, right, is it's meant to like I, I hopefully I, I succeeded. It's meant to make it um kind of like audibly transit from one section to another, but at the same time still maintain coherence. So I didn't like suddenly slam in with any big drums or like some very percussive instruments. What I did is I used sounds that kind of just match the overall texture of the first part. Because I mean we have so far created a very kind of soft bit of piano and strings. It's a very mellow sound. Of course, the piano is percussive and all that, but it's kind of played very softly because that's why it's called a soft piano. Okay. Yeah, it's, a, it's that kind of very mellow sound. So, um, I, so like, since we are just made, we are just like essentially writing to one like picture in our head, like it doesn't, there doesn't need to be any like drastic shifts and all that in the progression of the piece. So, um, the sounds that you select next um, should kind of match this quality. They don't have to be exactly the same instruments. In fact, they are completely different instruments as the first part. So here I'm using a Peel guitar. It's called, yeah, this is, uh, yeah, I just moved here. Yeah, this is, by the way, it's all Spitfire Labs. Uh, like I mentioned on the chat yesterday, it's all just, it's all just free instruments that I'm using. So this is like a, it's a lap steel. It's a kind of uh, guitar instrument. Yeah, I'm just playing on my keyboard here. Lah. So is this kind of instrument, it's not a piano, obviously, but at the same time, it kind of has this kind of similar soft quality uh, to it. Lah. Yeah, wait, I just read the chat. I see Vels are happy. Oh, uh, yeah, do you? Oh, Christy, you can't hear anything. Oh, uh, wait, did I? Wait, hold on. Huh? Low strings. Sorry? Oh, the lower strings. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh yeah, yeah it's, it's it was very soft, la. Yeah, 
yeah. Uh, because yeah, I purposely made it very. It's just a very tiny scraping texture. Uh, sorry. Uh, uh, do you automate track volume for your piano? Um, for this one, I didn't automate because I just for my piano, I just played it, so I didn't have to automate anything. The strings, I did a little bit of volume modulation, but with the modulation, we I'll get to that section in a while. All right. Thanks for asking. Uh, by the way, I won't always be able to see the chat because like the way Zoom has it is kind of hidden and it doesn't tell me when you'll say anything. So I mean if you all just want to speak into the voice chat, that'll be better. Like, I think I can immediately respond. Okay. Yeah. All right. Welcome. Yeah. So um so like I was saying, you have to pick stuff that kind of is temporally coherent. So the soft piano, of course, is uh, this kind of very soft mellow sound. Uh, and so is this guitar. As much as they are different instruments, they still have this overall overarching sense of uh, softness, mellowness, tranquility. This guitar is not like some heavy metal riff like that. It is a very subtle. So in order to build like coherent progression, you just have to pick like this kind of complementary sounds that transit from one to another. Okay, yeah. Yeah, okay. So um, this is what I did with the guitar. Then of course there's this tape orchestra flautando. Okay, so I'll just solo it a bit. Okay, so this is a kind of orchestral-ish kind of sound. I'll just pull it up. This is also a lapse instrument. It's all lapse instruments. Like, uh, yeah, so uh, flautando is basically a kind of a playing style for string uh, strings players where it kind of is a more reserved, top back restricted sound, um, but it kind of is, is more fragile in that sense, but it creates this kind of very, almost like heart-wrenching kind of quality. It's like, it's like, it's screeching, but in a kind of pleasant way. I'm not really sure how to describe, but that's the kind of like quality of sound I have. So it is still pretty soft, although now um, I progressed a little bit you can like audibly hear the progression although it's still pretty coherent nah. because at the first at the first part here oh sorry so look yeah at the first part here it's pretty uh low in terms of the notes that i chose because the piano i'm playing it i'm playing it very low and then like the the strings i'm playing them low so of course I want to create progression. I want to create excitement, right? And like basically to all, like to excite the listener, you you should like put more high frequencies, especially the first part. It's pretty low and all that because that's how you create progression. So if you hear like the sound of the timbre of the guitar, it's kind of a more mid to high kind of sound rather than the low rumblingness of the piano and the strings. Okay, the tape orchestra and flautando. I also pick a higher note. So these are just very simple textures. La. The tape orchestra, I'm literally just I'm literally just holding the notes for a very long time. Like if you look at the MIDI, right? I'm just like holding three notes and just holding them for super duper long. Okay. It is a bit unrealistic because a real orchestra would never hold a note this long. La. But um it's I mean it's electronic, so you can kind of take liberties with that. Okay, so um yes. So this is like that's what I did, it's just a simple like pop. It's like think of it like a cloud that's now like above the kind of rumbling piano and all that. Then the guitar is just an additional little texture. So I would say the guitar is at this moment the most complex part that I have. Out of the four parts that we have seen so far, guitar is the most complex. Oh, sorry, you can see right? Yeah. Hey, then I have a question. Yep. Um when you mix this like this, then do you like eliminate like for example you have your low string, then do you just eliminate all the high frequency and then you just keep the low frequency? Because sometimes I feel like when I layer sounds like that, then it gets muddy, then I like I don't know how to continue really. Like that. Mm, that is one way, but for the specific example that I have here, I didn't actually do that because I didn't think it was necessary. But yeah, you're right in saying because when you play 
like I guess pianos are uh, a, a lot more low heavy, right? Then you put a string on top. Then sometimes strings, the samples come with a lot of the rumbling low. Then I think in that sense, it will be good to cut out um, stuff. But in this sense, um, I just kind of like avoided the whole kind of problem by making sure my piano only plays oh. low notes and my string plays high. So it's more of like, it's, I, I was just, I'm thinking in terms of like how a real kind of piano would play with a real orchestra. Like if, because like if a real piano, like if let's say we're on a stage, there's a piano and there's like a bunch of string players, if they both play at the same time and they both play at low registers, it's going to sound muddy. And since it's all live music, there's no way that they can EQ it out or anything because it's all live. So I'm just thinking with that kind of mindset, like let's say this is, a, I'm arranging for a real live musicians, right? Or let's say the, the virtual instruments in my software session are actually like real people. How would they play? So in that sense, in the way that the piece will be arranged, usually the piano and the strings will be intentionally separated out in terms of notes. So you kind of avoid the problem of the EQ or like the muddiness all around. Yeah. Okay. Does that answer? Okay, okay, and then yeah. yes, but thanks. I it is quite a it's quite a major concern um that you brought up. Uh, so thanks for bringing that up because it is important. Uh, it's not to say that this kind of composition doesn't require EQing or anything, but generally, like in terms of you should before you hit the stage where you start to engineer the song or like kind of produce like start post-production on the song, like EQ mixing and all that. Um, I think it's it makes it easier on yourself when you voice the instruments differently or you voice the instruments with these kind of considerations in mind in the first place. So you tackle it on a compositional level rather than on a kind of production or engineering level. Okay? Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, thanks yeah, for that yeah. Okay, uh, Maria, I... okay, so yeah, now I... I showed the guitar part here, right? So the guitar part is a little bit more complex because it's kind of its own line. Uh, this actually, even if you see like the synthwave tracks that I do, right? This is kind of like what I usually do. Usually most of the instrumentation in my synthwave track is just the same repeated patterns. It's like arpeggios and like maybe one pad like floating at the top. But then I will always try to bring in one line where it feels more live and played. Lah. So you hear this? So this one, it feels a little bit more organic because it's not, it's not a played arpeggio. It's not like the piano or the bass just rumbling. Because like a few of those are just like kind of creating a support. So in this sense, the guitar is almost like a lead instrument, although it's muted. Like, it's very like kind of mellowed out just because of the overall uh, necessary tonality of the piece. So this is just one more complicated uh, part that I put off. So I just came up with it. Like, oops, sorry. So um, especially if you are a relatively newer to uh, music production, it might take a while to like be able to come up with riffs and all that. But that's where uh, I think practice comes in handy. And like, it's honestly just a matter of just noodling on the keyboard until something nice comes out. Um, for this piece, I specifically just pick C major. So I really don't have to bother with the black keys at all. So it's quite easy. So I can just, I can just like, So I'm just, that was just like randomly pressing notes in some sort of arbitrary rhythm. And you can sort of like already create stuff. So like the way I do it is, it's almost like improvisation. Like so I just play stuff until I hear something that works, something until something falls out of my brain that works. And then I just, okay, get that down, get that down. Then I, yeah. Then uh, it takes a little bit of practice to do this. And it's uh, honestly easier if you have some um, sort of uh, piano play, a keyboard playing background and all that. But I mean, you can also do this with piano roll. Like. It's just it you need to get the idea down and stretch all the notes nicely before it kind of uh, before it kind of disappears from your head. Because like. that's like kind of the for me the disadvantage of like piano roll um, is it's not as spontaneous as just playing it in. Okay? Yeah, but I mean, certainly can be done. So I just added a little bit more complex line here because so far we've all like just had very simple textures and all that. So this adds a little bit of a lift to the piece. Okay, so now I'll move on to the third section. So I'll just play from 
Yeah, sorry, all my my clips are all like sized pretty weirdly, uh, because I, I'm not really good at like managing the Ableton workspace. <laughs> but yeah, uh, okay. You know, Something, yeah? So, yes. uh, I have another question. Sorry. Yeah. But just now you say like you just, um, okay, like you, you make sure your, your instrument is one low, and then like another one is like me, then another one is like high like that. Do you mean by doing that you 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 make the notes on by like ranging on the octave like low octave then like mid octave and high maybe I don't uh, know. Yes, yes. Is that what that's you mean? Like, yes, that's what I meant. Yep, exactly. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Okay, yeah. Welcome. Yeah, because yeah, it's it's more of like a composition. So like let's say the bass, I will just keep the notes to like I guess C two D two like that. Wait, <laughs> Sean, Ableton certified trainer, okay, feels teaching. Oh, dude, that's so useful. Okay, okay, Sean blowing everyone's mind. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, uh, okay, okay, sorry, sorry, I got another yeah. question. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. What's the low, low, low frequency range? Like, if you can't see one, see two, like, like that, that kind. Then, like, uh, what's the what's the high? Usually, low is C one to C two. Mid is C three, C C4 and even C4 is getting a bit high already. Then the rest is all high low. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. Thanks. But of course, you can also just use your ears because sometimes, like, it might make sense to put uh, a sort of like maybe you are using a bass instrument, but you but the C3 note on that bass sounds nice. Then, of course, then you just break the rule. Uh. It, it's, it's okay. Uh. But um, generally, the rule is just C1, C2 low, then, the, then C3, C4 mid. Then the rest are high. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, this part I wanted to create pro uh, even more progression. Okay. Yeah. Then just now Kevin got excited about the bells, right? Yeah. The the this bell sounds very nice. But okay. So uh, I'll just play this part and then progress from. You'll just progress from section two to section three. You can very visibly see the progression of the track. It's very simple. It's only six layers. Okay. So I'll just play. Oh, sorry. I'll just play here. Solo, oops. Okay, so that's the yeah, so that's the last part. So actually, if you see right just now, what I was talking about, um, from like the kind of separate like separating low, mid, and high in terms of like instrumentation and notes rather than like EQing, right? You can kind of see the progression in it here because you have the first section where it's just very rumbling, pretty low to low mid frequencies, like just a bass string and just a soft piano. Then with the guitar, you get a little bit more some tones with a little bit more body. So. So this kind of tones, it's like there's more high frequency content, but it's still kind of relatively mid-ish. Uh, the tape orchestra is actually uh, pretty high already, but at the same time, it's kind of just a static, um, a static instrument because it's just like holding, I'm basically just holding one note. I'm just holding, oops, sorry. Yeah, I'm just holding. I'm just holding like some notes. So it's not really moving all that much. Okay, so now with this final part, this is supposed to be like the, almost like, like the highest, the, the point of the piece where the energy is at its highest. Uh. So um, this is where I bring out the kind of very cinematic strings as well as the bells, because bells are fundamentally pretty uh, high, high pitch instrument. It's very airy, very top and heavy. Then of course I have the strings also, which are very rich and very lush, full of detail. So.
So stuff like that. Okay. So this is where I start to bring in all these things. These are the more exciting, meaty sounds that are starting to come out, especially the strings. Strings are always very rich and lush, especially if the libraries are good. Lah. So um, yeah, this is where I start to bring it up. But at the same time, they all notice, like what they all notice about like the instruments that I chose. Yeah, please try to ask in the chat because I, I always miss. Okay, uh, how do you make the guitar softer in the second half, is it? The second half, uh, Anne-Marie, do you mean this part or something? Oh, uh, like uh, when I don't know. I think um, it could be what Wing said. Like when the strings uh started playing, then the guitar was like it seemed softer. But maybe it was just the strings over. Oh yes, yes. That's that's uh, that's exactly it. like I didn't do any automation at all. Uh, except for the strings and the strings, I did a special kind of modulation. But yeah, actually the guitar is just I just when when the strings come in, it's just kind of just the guitar just falls behind, no? Just naturally falls behind, but in terms of actual like volume automation, if you I open up the automation, there's nothing. I didn't do anything. So yeah. Oh, wait, how do you do the volume automation? Uh, volume automation. Yeah. How oh, do you uh, as in just uh, okay, I press A on the keyboard, then it brings up automation. Then uh, like you can just pick the pick the parameter you want here, lah. Uh, oh. I'm, a, I'm a bit I'm a bit bad at the automation in Ableton, but uh, yeah. Okay, okay. Something like that. Then you can just move the, you can move the, like the, you can draw the line to whatever you need it to be. Like. Ah, track volume, sorry. Yeah, then you just click here, draw the line, then it automatically moves. Uh, sometimes for this kind of media composition, it's quite useful to do, especially if the string library doesn't have a, the type of fade that you want it to have. Like, because sometimes the this strings library, they kind of like come in too fast or they don't come in in a way that you want, then you want, then it will be useful to automate track volume. But in the case of this track, I didn't have the need to do that. Yeah, so yeah. Okay, thank you. Hmm. Yeah, like Wayne explained, masking happens when louder songs take over. Uh, EMCC. Woo! I have a question. Yes? How do you see the frequency spectrum of a sample in Ableton? A sample? Uh, frequency spectrum. Uh, um, actually, this one does. Do you mean like the whole curve of it? Yeah, the whole curve like, of it. Um, hmm. If I'm not okay, this one I'm not too familiar, but uh, yes. Um, I don't know if I have, but uh, because mine is light, but if you're on suite, you should have something like that spectrum, then it should be able to let you visualize the whole kind of thing. Can, can, can. Can, right? Oh, can. Nice. Okay, so... Oh, sorry. Yeah, so uh, this is a free plugin, so you can get it. It's called M Melda Audio Analyzer. I think Ben has told us to install the Melda pack in the past session, so you might have it. Or if not, you should have the link somewhere. But you can just search Melda production if you don't have it, then you can just get it. Because it's, it's quite useful to like see the spectrum and all that. Okay, thank you. Okay, so the quality of the sounds, right, that I picked, even for this part, I'm still keeping to my same rules. This is still a very mellow piece. It's meant to be a very... Uh, it's meant to be a, It's meant to be still a mellow track. So my choice of instruments still has to be congruent or like it still has to match my previous choices for the previous actions. So here I pick a string. Yes, this is a very rich and large sound. But at the same time, right, um, it has to also, it has also, it also has to match. So this, this, this is where like what Clint mentioned earlier about like slow attack, slow release. This is where it's applicable because the strings actually have a pretty slow attack. So they kind of just swell into the scene rather than like kind of just taking over and like that. They kind of swell into the scene, then come back down. It's almost like it's almost like breathing because like another thing we are going through a forest. It's a living, breathing forest and all that, right? So you want to have like the strings come in gradually. It's almost like it's it's almost express expressing like the breath of the the breath of the wow legend of Zelda. Eh? Okay, but yeah, something like that. Uh, but uh, so that's the kind of how you make it congruent. Like I'm not really making any big sudden changes. As much as I'm bringing in new instruments, the new instruments are made to come in gradually. Uh, in terms of the handbells, yes, you could say they kind of come in 
a little bit more suddenly, just by nature of the way bells sound. Like. Bells have a fast attack, so like. But at the same time, the overall quality of the bell sound is nothing too aggressive. It's a very subtle, it's, it's, it's a very kind of, it's a kind of very like um, almost angelic sound, like, and uh, not really meant to be ob uh, obtrusive. It's not meant to like, it's not meant to really poke out in an unpleasant or like um, overly attention grabbing way. Uh. Yeah. Sorry, I'm using a lot of metaphors and all that, but it, it just it's just the way I compose. Like I think of what these what are the like kind of like functions or like what kind of the qualities of these uh, kinds of instruments in this way. It's just the way I think of it. It's like hmm, is this aggressive? Is this mellow? Is this sweet? Is this friendly? Even like it's almost it's I almost think of the instruments as if they have like kind of human qualities, and that's kind of how I translate uh translate my uh, ideas from like whatever source i have into the music that i have so um this is the progression that i have Okay, so that's actually the entire cue. So if you can tell, like it's not very, very complicated. It's only six layers. Um, and yeah, it's just all about picking correct, the correct sounds. Uh. First, uh, on, it, it does take a little bit of practice to like choose the correct ones. And it takes a little bit of like getting to know what sounds you have before like you can kind of do this quickly. But I mean, it, it's quite an uh, important thing also because like it kind of make sure your track is coherent throughout and doesn't have any random sudden changes. Sudden changes are okay in other types of music, uh, but even when you have sudden changes, they kind of have to make sense to the context of what you are composing for. Like in this, in this sense, we are kind of composing for like a tranquil forest scene. So it doesn't really make sense to have like sudden, like uh, explosive noises coming out of nowhere. So um, the choice of sounds is important. Um, and in terms of like composition, it's okay to keep it sparse, okay? Like I'm not really doing any like very complicated lines. Like all the only the complicated thing like you could like think of is I guess maybe the guitar and the bells because those are a little bit more elaborate. But at the same time, I'm not doing any like any like super fast like uh, it's all like it's all pretty like slow. So it's kind of melodies that you can kind of very easily follow, um, which which is which fits the tone because you don't want anything that kind of pokes out too like over dramatically because this is a tranquil scene you're scoring too. So yeah, these are kind of the considerations that I go into when I'm like presented with like kind of a an initial starting point kind of idea. Like let's say I'm like given that that footage of the forest and all that. This is kind of like the thought process that I go through. Uh, I'm sorry if it doesn't come through as well during through Zoom. I'm not I'm not sure how well it comes through, but yeah, that's kind of the process that I go through when I'm like given some like this kind of brief. Okay, yeah. Any any questions? Oh, uh, I was just wondering, right? So, uh, Jenna, you're talking about how the guitar was like kind of like the main voice, even though it's quite muted, right? Mm. Yeah, so, is that is that the last thing you came out with, or do you like? Do you like finish all the background sounds first, then do the guitar or like? Hmm. Okay, that's a good question. Um, actually, the way that I arranged this project, right, is the order by which I came up with all the parts. So um, I, I literally made it like this is the soft piano is the first part. I put, I put low strings second, guitar third. So in this case, um, it the guitar wasn't the last thing that I did. It's just that it happened to be at this point, right, when I had put down the low strings and the soft piano the guitar line was what I came up with at that point in time. Then I just put that down. Then from the guitar line, like let's just like take out the, take, take this out first. Like, so at this point in time, it kind of sounded like this. So this was, this was when I put in the guitar line. So at, at, at a point in time when I was composing this, the, like it, it sounded like this. 
Uh, but then it was then from here that I started to conceptualize, okay, what can I do to make it more exciting? So the guitar represents some new change, but at the same time, I felt like the higher frequencies or the higher registers weren't very, weren't really engaged with as well. So I thought, what could complement the guitar? Um, ideally, the thing that should complement the guitar isn't, wouldn't be another kind of like uh, thing with very obvious kind of notes because the guitar is a, like you can tell each note from the other. It's a it's a sound with very uh, fast attack, so you can tell that the notes are the the but so the next natural progression would be to pick a sound that doesn't do that, so it doesn't clash. So this is kind of the thinking that I had. So I just picked this flautando thing, which sounds like that. So this is a more uh, kind of it's a held kind of sound rather than it's not playing any distinctive notes. So this is how, how, how I came up with it. Hmm. Okay, yeah, does that answer? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. so that means like you kind of um, work like um, the strings too and the handbells kind of like uh, worked around the guitar, right? In the sense. Yes, yes. Okay. That's right. Yeah. All right. Hmm. Oh, by the way, um, just a reminder, this project file is available for everyone. Like I put it in the Telegram group. group so it's like, I, I just put everything there, but you do need Spitfire Labs to run it. Um, and I think at this point, is it might be a good time to like bring up Spitfire Labs. Uh, yeah, because I'm about to transition to like the the the, the NAF stuff that I did. Uh. But uh, basically, this is how Labs look like if, if you all have never used it before. It's a very simple, clean interface. Um, the way you install it, right, is, wait, I'll just, is you have to go to uh, labs.spitfire.com, then you download um, their... They are basically their downloader. La. Yeah, it's, it's quite funny. Download the downloader. Wait, I will show you all in a while. Okay, I'll stop share then. Yeah, so um, basically once you log in, right, you are able to like just need help download for, yeah, you just have to go here, download for Mac, download for Windows, read our FAQ and all that. Uh, all these things, the way they have it, right, is that every single Labs instrument is just contained within this one plugin but the libraries are all these individual presets. La. So they are all contained within one like tidy plugin, but all the sounds are available from here. So what you're, in, you're, you're not installing like individual plugins for every single like piano or string library or anything. It's all contained within here. Um, the way that they do it is that they put it in the, they put it in this, they put it in this installer thing here. Yeah, then so they have this special tab called Labs. Then this is every single free one that is available. Uh. And of course, I, I downloaded every single one. Uh. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's about like 30 gigs or something. But it's all worth it uh, because it's all free. So once you install this, uh, Labs will start to, will show up in your Ableton under Spitfire Audio. Then it will be under Labs. Then you just drag it into an Ableton MIDI track and then you can use it already. Okay. So yeah, later on, uh, at the end of the, this session, I'll show you all more free things that you all can check out. Because um, the, the main founder behind Spitfire is a, is a pretty cool guy. Uh. He, he does a lot of stuff that's for free. Yeah, a uh, lot of um, free stuff. Yeah, you, we wouldn't download a car. <laughs> okay, yeah. All right, so, okay. So that is actually the Ableton project that I have. Um, okay, any questions? Okay, so if no questions, I uh, I think you can have like a three minute break because I need to go. Also. But uh, I will launch my uh, software and then I can go through the the kind of the the um, the NAF project that I did.